Elimination Chamber 2020 first match Drew Gulak versus Daniel Bryan. Drew Gulak brought the fight. He wore out that neck. He was working. He knew exactly what this man has gone through in the past. He left battered and bruised. He also tried locking in a dragon lock, but Bryan ended up coming out. He also went to the top turnbuckle. He did like a reverse inverted suplex landed, but it came down to Daniel Bryan putting him in the yes lock and not tapping out, but passing out, which Daniel Bryan captured the win. U.S. champ on the line, Andrade defending it against Huberto Carrillo, and nothing short from a banger. Both delivered. We got all 14,000 fans on the crowd. Well, 15 of you round up. We also got some outside interference by Selena Vega. She exposed part of the floor where he got the concrete all out. But Huberto Carrillo, he still took risk, man. He went over the top and came back in. He thought he was going to pick up the win. And it was it came down to, like, pinfalls. It was one coming after the other. It was like a back-and-forth kind of pinfall. But Andrade ended up pulling the tight to retain the U.S. title. First Elimination Chamber match of the night and the first two teams to get it started were the New Day and the Usos. And then came along the highlight reel. And what I mean by the highlight reel is these two. Lucha House Party, they were going everywhere, man. They were going off the top of the pods. They were even going off the very, very top of the actual chamber. Once they got all their highlight reel moves in, they got eliminated right off the bat. So let's go ahead and take them out of the picture because Heavy Machinery were the next two runners up. And I got to say, even for them, they were taking care of their work as well. Otis, no, actually it was Tucker. He, he had climbed up. He had chased Bobby Roode down. And once he had thrown Dolph Ziggler, no, actually it was Ziggler. He was up there. And then once he threw Ziggler over to Otis, he fed to him. He did this like suicide front flip onto the rest of everyone. And Tucker took a pretty nasty bump as well too. He was coming full charge at Ziggler. He moved out of the way at the last minute. Ended up breaking the back of the panel going over by the announcer team. There he was out. He was completely out. Tucker ended up getting pinned. So these two had come out. And the last two that had come in, well actually after them it was Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode that were uh, inside the chamber. But these were the last guys. Like as soon as Otis and Tucker got eliminated, they were the last participants to come down to it all. Next team to be eliminated was Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. They both ended up getting splashed by the Uso Penitentiary to come down to the last three. This is where it was all narrowed down. It was the last four and Kofi Kingston, I'm not going to say he messed up, but guess what? You messed up. You ended up getting pinned off the get-go. Miz and Morrison already had the advantage. These guys were the first to enter the match and they were fresh, as fresh can be. We had a figure four leg lock cinched in. We also had Morrison going off the top rope, but that wasn't enough. It came down to a skull crushing finale and Miz and Morrison to capture and retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles. No disqualifications match between AJ and Aleister Black. Getting it all ready here. Prepping it up. Warming the oven for the dead man. But we'll talk about Undertaker in just a sec. We got to talk about the actual match itself. There were some good spots. I will say that uh, the AJ Styles, when he was outside and there was like a regular, not like the announcer table, there was a regular wooden table that Aleister Black had set up. He did a nice little diving knee shot right through it. And from there, it was like, all right, man, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to capture the win regardless of the outside interference and this is where Gallus and Anderson came out and started beating up on him this was the perfect timing dude AJ Styles he was about to set up for the phenomenal forum guess who showed up dude Undertaker you mind if I do one more choke slam all right I guess if we're gonna be ready for Wrestlemania I guess you gotta get it started right all right so choke slam right there on AJ Styles to get the mania party kicked off and then one black mask to seal the deal and Aleister Black to pick up the win Raw Tag Team titles up next, and we have the Street Profits defending them against Rollins and Buddy Murphy. And we got interference, not one, but on two different occasions during this match. AOP, they were going to partake. They were going to do some stuff to help them out. And then that's where the returning right here of the Viking Raiders, they came out and they kind of took a backstage and just started beating them up, just eliminate them out of the whole picture. So that way it's more of a fair matchup for the tag team titles. And then KO comes to the crowd eating some popcorn throws it at Rollins' face, and that was enough distraction for Buddy Murphy to end up getting pinned. Fortunately, a short loss for these two, which sucks because this match could have gone either way. They had so many opportunities for them to roll up the Street Profits, but it wasn't enough for them to capture the titles. Big Brawny defending the IC Championship in a handicap. Sami Zayn, the most focused out of the three. We had a prior interview before the match even started, and he says, just let me, just let me do most of the work, right? I just want you guys by the apron 
concerned. I just want to make sure you guys keep an eye out if this guy plans on doing what he has been doing. Or is he gonna? No, he didn't. So, superplex. Triple threat move. Both Cesaro and Nakamura holding him up for Sami Zayn to hit him with the halua kick to capture the Intercontinental Championship. Women's elimination matchup for grabs for the Raw Women's title. Number one contender for WrestleMania. The main event, right? So we're going to have the first two, Natty and Ruby Ride starting it off. And then it ended up being Sarah Logan. And all were doing their thing up until the time that we saw Shayna Baszler. She went in there. She made her tap out ASAP. Coquina clutch. Well, it's not a Coquina clutch. Rear naked choke lock right there on Sarah Logan. And then Ruby be riot and then she ended up grabbing that glass panel and bashing it over natty's head until she couldn't take anymore and ended up tapping out there was a lot of awkward time in between these two while they were waiting it was just Shayna baszler waiting in the middle of the ring and even when sarah logan got or she ended up coming in she also got choked out at the top turnbuckle right there see you later sarah logan are we gonna actually have a chance here uh, i don't know let's go ahead and attempt it nope absolutely not also, another elimination for Shayna Baszler to get a Brock Lesnar beast mode in this match. That's what she did. She went in there strong, and she finished stuff strong. Let me know how you guys feel, man. Pay-per-view was all right. I mean, the main event, feel like there was, again, too much downtime for them to make up for all the other action that could have been delivered. I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.